Hej Jeanette och hej Jesper. My name is Filip Vakander and I'm here with Jeanette Steinsland and Jesper Elg. Jeanette is from is she's the co-founder and uh, owner of uh, Steinsland Berlina here in Stockholm. And Jesper is uh, the owner and founder of the uh, gallery V1 in Copenhagen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And for those uh, listening who are interested in uh, in your galleries but maybe not maybe don't don't know so much about them, what would you say is uh, is your is the ga- gallery identity, for example, uh, Steinsland Valina? H- how would people recognize your gallery, and how is that dif- different from other galleries in Stockholm? I think that is actually a really hard question to answer myself because I'm in it, so I think that's probably easier for someone else to answer. But what I can answer is that uh, the way we are working is that we often work with artists that are in the beginning of their career and that we help them build their career from the beginning. So we're a gallery there you maybe get your first solo exhibition and hopefully your 40th solo exhibition. And Jesper, is, is uh, your gallery similar to Jeanette's or is it different? I, I, I would say we have similar, um, similar, I think, ideas and the way of viewing art and what art can do. But I think we've been running uh, V1 for 18 years. So a lot of the people we started with are now what you would call mid-career artists. And so they're a little further down the career path, you could say. Um, so, but but. In a way, I think uh, Steinsland Berliner and V1 have the same intention of kind of bringing new art uh, into into the public sphere and bringing new artists into into the world and trying to help them build and manage an, an artistic practice. But you also said that uh, you think that you work with the same ideas of art or the same perspectives. Uh, what could those kind of shared ideas be? Well. For V1, at least, it's very much been about artists that in some way want to reflect and connect with the world. That it's artists that have a practice that is engaging uh, an audience in a certain way. Uh, so I think that's that's something we share, that we, we, we like to find people that are maybe a little bit off the, the, normal, uh, the normal track and, and, and trying to facilitate their work. Mm. And, so, I, I think for us it's also how we work with the artist mm. uh, that we're looking for artists that are working all the time and that have an idea of where they want to go and where they want to mm, sort of exhibit so you have a plan for how you want to sort of develop your career as an artist um, I often think of it almost like you know if you're a football player you may be a Zlatan you start in Malmö And then you get a sort of new club and a new club and you sort of develop. So I I also look at the way I work for an artist is that I help the artist to actually become a better artist. So it's a collaboration, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how do you go about finding these artists? Is it so that is it do, do artists come to you or do you actively go out looking or how does it work? I think for us at least, it's often that we find the artist uh, and uh, often also that other artists that we work for or work with uh, tell us about an artist that we should uh, look at or uh, meet. Uh, for us it's it's uh, often that we really trust and listen to the artists. Is it the, the same for you Jesper? Yes, again, we've been doing it for so many years, so it's kind of almost hard to explain the process now. But in the beginning, 18 years ago, we were definitely out there looking and and traveling quite a lot and, and seeing things in New York and London and Paris that we didn't feel was being showed in this part of Europe. And, and that kind of motivated us to build the platform we want to show some of these things that were not being shown here or, or anywhere else. And, and I think now, as Jeanette was saying, it's very much like uh, other artists will, artists we already work with will recommend artists. 
um, but it's also in the gallery. I have we have like a curatorial group of where we have five people that are putting images and texts and everything into that pot, and then once in a while we review it, and then we might go on a studio visit or so. So we also we are continuously just looking and searching, uh, not because you're actually uh, uh, we need more artists in that sense, just because we're curious. You know, we we want to stay orientated. Because I can see how that would be a strength to to listen to your own networks and to the people that you know and, and trust. But isn't that also a challenge? Couldn't that also maybe lead to a rather homogenous kind of um, artist group? Or yeah, yeah. I think it's very important that you kind of get out of your comfort zone, and that's I think why why we have this forum where we are sharing all these things. And it can be quite crazy sometimes what we're putting in there, but it makes us all look at least, you know, and we have the discussion about quality or, and sometimes you find an artist that you think uh, think is, is amazing, but uh, she or he doesn't fit into your program. You know, you basically know that this is an amazing artist, but they would probably be better off somewhere else. And then you also have to kind of respect that, uh, that feeling, you know. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's it's really about uh, artists fitting with um, with what you can offer them, so to speak, in terms of your collaboration, uh, for example, yeah. and how you can work long term with someone. And and today, uh, do you see, do you think that there are any anything that is a, a defining theme in the contemporary art uh, world uh, today in terms of uh, I don't know technology or materials or issues that uh, that you that you Identify, identify as, as the strongest or more most recurring themes at the moment? Or is that like an outdated way of speaking or, or viewing art? I don't, I don't think so. I think, uh, I mean, I think a lot of great contemporary art today engages like contemporary issues that could be the way we're treating the world or it could be gender problems, you know, inequality. Uh, so I think, uh, I think they're very often like a sophisticated way of addressing these things in art and then maybe gives a different perspective that we have in, in a typical, uh, like a, in a verbal language. They're here you can treat these problems, dilemmas in, in, a, in a different language and I think that's often what makes it really interesting, you know. And, and I, in, in general, I see uh, at the moment a lot of uh, uh, female artists kind of turning that traditional like male gaze around and like adding, adding a new and an interesting perspective uh, to, to, to the conversation. And also feel like a lot of artists at the moment are, are working kind of with the, with the earth or they're working with the spiritual, like they're kind of, uh, you know, where the, I think the spiritual has been like away from art in some way because it was very conceptual and very uh, like clean philosophical lines. And I think now there's like the space for mysticism and, uh, you know, meditation. And I think, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the art field is like expanding at the moment. So I think it's a very interesting time to have, to have galleries. Do you recognize uh, what Jesper is talking about, these themes? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I guess that the way I work is that I work so close to each artist that I work for. So I, I sort of more look at one practice at a time. And for me, they're also so different. I mean, some are just sort of um, uh, working on a painting and how a painting can be interested in itself. And I, for me, it's like art is supposed to be free from everything so it's it's also nice if it doesn't always reflect the time we're in mm. it can also just be sort of exploring your own practice yeah so art shouldn't always be a social commentary but sometimes it should just be art for art itself yeah yeah and how do you um, because now of course we're at uh, at uh, market uh, art, fair, art fair, sorry, uh, and uh, I'm curious, how have, how have you selected the pieces to showcase here? Uh, should I start? Yes. Uh, well, we decided that we wanted to uh, show more than one artist uh, because of the pandemic. We wanted to sort of remind people of more of the artists that we work for. 
So we've chosen to bring seven different artists and uh, with different materials and different ways of working. Uh, and the pieces has been chosen by the artists and not by us. And for you? Um, I think our presentation maybe started three years ago, where an artist, American artist, we work with Daniel Orchard, and another one, artist, uh, Nikki Malouf, they had a double exhibition uh, in the gallery where they had this great conversation about, they're both painters, but what it was like to work on paper. So it was, a, it was an exhibition where they only did works in paper and in that they had a really great text about the materiality of paper and, and, and the difference between painting on canvas and, and, and painting on paper. And that kind of inspired me and I looked at our artist rooster and I found we have a lot of artists working with paper, you know. And then I came up with this idea that we should make this paper cut bodega and invite all the artists that have like a serious practice relating to the material. And so we invited 18 artists all to do uh, works on paper for, for the fair. And I think we started inviting them maybe uh, like a year ago and then works have been coming in and then everything has come together in Copenhagen and then come here afterwards. But uh, Jeanette, you mentioned the pandemic. How has the pandemic affected uh, the art world? Or you in particular uh, as gallerists? Oh, in so many, many ways. Um, many of the artists that I work for has had show cancelled, which means that we have uh, more work that we have to store, uh, which means that uh, we have work that we want to show and we need to sort of figure out where and how and when. So I guess that's been one of the biggest problems has been that the artists had had productions that hasn't been shown. And they've had museum ex exhibitions that people haven't, couldn't visit. So that's been one of the most frustrating things, I think. And is it the same for you, Jesper? Yes, there's of course been this kind of bottleneck with shows being postponed or cancelled and also in, in Copenhagen we worked on the restrictions where sometimes you could have three visitors in the galleries and sometimes you could have none and sometimes you could have 20 so to kind of navigate that has been uh, taking a lot of time and effort but in general I would also say it became a time where you then became more inventive so we have uh, we have we had four spaces and in one of the spaces uh, of the gallery we would simply do like a, a weekly exhibition called today specials where everybody all the staff took turns curating this and then we would have uh, have it documented nicely with photograph and so forth so you could online basically see a new exhibition unfold in the gallery every week and I think we did this for like 12, 13 weeks of lockdown and so it was also about finding new ways of communicating and, and saying like well we have this platform, uh, we have a responsibility, how, how do you stay visible in this time and how do you stay relevant? So I think it's, it's been a lot of work, uh, but it's certainly also been interesting to challenge like the notion of status quo and thinking oh, all these things I used to do, just having that pause and thinking, could we do it better? Could we do it more interesting? And I think certainly in a way we've been able to get the, the artist closer to the audience because we've written longer pieces, we've been better at documenting things. Of course, they couldn't have that physical meeting. That is so important that we also see here in market that it is important that we come together and we have that like real uh, real time with an artwork, you know, not behind a screen. But I think it's it's I think hopefully the good things that we have learned will stick with us, and and then the rest will hopefully be history. But speaking of these uh, these meetings that uh, that for example take place in a, in a space like this, I'm also thinking about what you said, uh, Jeanette, when you talked about the the ongoing collaboration that can sometimes go on for many years uh, with artists. What does it look like with, um, with clients, with people uh, purchasing uh, art? Do you often have uh, people that return to your gallery and uh, so that you can you know, see how their collections slowly progress? Or is it more like people buy one piece and then they never come back? Do you, or do you also like, form relationships with, uh, with your clients? 
Definitely. We have a good relationship with almost every, all of our clients. But of course, there's also uh, people that buy a piece and you never see them again. But uh, that depends on also what kind of piece they buy. If it's a silk print, uh, then that's more that kind of client. But if you, the way I work is that if you work for an artist that has important pieces, then you try and sort of place them in uh, a good collector's um, hand or an institution and you know who those clients are and you build uh, a, a relationship with that client and you build a collection together with that client. Mm. And do you uh, recognize uh, what Jeanette is saying from your gallery? Very much. I think we work very much with, uh, with returning clients or returning institutions um, and I do also see, uh, and this is interesting being here at market, I do see that like, we're getting a younger audience. It seems like the, the people that are interested in art, at least in our experience, are getting younger and younger, which is very nice because there has been this tendency that, that, that the collectors were getting older and older, you know, and, and so, so to see new people kind of getting into investing in art and seeing it as, as, as also an important kind of social responsibility that you're here to, to build like also an art society, I think that, has, that is really interesting at the moment. And uh, when you meet these new clients, uh, do you have any particular good advice to, to give to these uh, emerging collectors? Uh, how, how do you advise them on, on buying their first um, uh, art piece, for example? Ooh, that depends on who they are and yeah. what, what they are looking to, into buying. But I, I think that I say often that it's important that you want to live with the art piece and that, you, that it's something that you want to sort of have around. Uh, and to be brave and maybe not buy the smallest piece, if you can afford to buy a little bit bigger, if you, then I think you should go for the one that you want instead of, um, yeah. yeah. Instead of settling for Safe, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's almost never that you regret it if you sort of can afford it and you want it, then, yeah. And for you, Jesper? Well, I, I think the only advice that I can really like give is that you should just see as much art as possible. Like go to galleries, go to museums, just see a lot of artists and then you'll kind of start to formulate an opinion about what you find interesting. But I do think that Jeanette's like, you know, challenge yourself a little bit because that will probably at home when you get the work home, you'll be happy that it will challenge you a little bit every day. You know, sometimes you won't see it, other times you will. And so I think, yeah, mm -hmm. to be a little bit bold is a, is a good idea. Well, thank you. Uh, I think that's very good advice. Uh, thank you, Jeanette, and thank you, uh, Jesper, for joining us. And thank you, of course, for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.